That's with the 14 card sideboard on accident. I mean, I have, you know, submitted a a, a 10 card sideboard before just because I had, like, changed some stuff and forgot to add the cards that I wanted to add. But this is SEG Tour, man. This is an open. Well, this is a big deal. So far, he hasn't really needed it. He's at 9 and 2. Well, maybe he needed it in those two losses. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's a good point. And he's going to need it here. Yeah, maybe he wants something here as we see Dilks on the play. And he naturally has Kabira Crossroads going to 22. Only has three Tormod's Crypt. Probably could use four Tormod's Crypt, you know? Yeah, just some graveyard hate spell in this field. That makes sense. Inspiring Vantage oh for Goblin God. Guide. Dilks is a deck not light on lands. He'll pick up a Gemstone Mine and fall to oh, 20. If you're Dilks, you got to be like, oh, Kabir Crossroads life gain actually matters this round. Right? That's nice. Yeah. That's weird. That doesn't happen too often. Going to put a lot of plant tokens into play, gain a bunch of two lives. Celestia Sanctuary picks up the Crossroads. Well, not the fastest start from Dilks, though. Didn't flow to mana, so he can't play Amulet of Vigor. And he has to move to discard, so he doesn't actually gain that, you know, virtual card that those bounce lands do provide. Gets to discard at Ghost Quarter. That one, not a big factor in the burn matchup. Go over to Collins. See what Mullen can produce on the second turn of the game. An attack with Goblin Guide is where he will start. Cavern of Souls picked up for Dilks. Dilks falls to 18. You know, hilariously enough, Dilks actually played Eldrazi Tron at the team open in the modern seat recently. And to see him switch back to Amulet Titan after that one week where they actually made top eight is pretty interesting. He must have had a bad go of it. Got carried by Daryl and Edgar. Those are good shoulders, so it wouldn't surprise me. Strong shoulders. My favorite type of shoulders. <laughs> you know how much I hate winning? I love when other people win oh, and carry me to victory. Getting carried is the perfect team outcome. Too bad it's never happened to me in my entire life. Scooter. <laughs> Suspend Rift Bolt post-combat post Will Mullen. No other action, though. Dilks thinking about playing Gemstone Mine, perhaps has a Sousa in hand. Goes with Cavern of Souls, don't want to get encountered. Name's Giant. Here's a Sousa. Gemstone Mine is land number two, one still in the tank. It's going to be that Kabira Crossroads, back to 20. Real quick heads up play there by Dilks. Uh, so when you have a Zeus on the battlefield, you, you can play your two lands and your opponent never really has a chance to respond to the Zeusa and kill it. Unless you play a land that has a triggered ability like a Kabir Crossroads. So you saw him play the Gemstone Mine first before the Kabir Crossroads. It's very minor, but sometimes it does end up mattering a lot. End step. Mullen sends a Lightning Bolt upstairs. Dilks to 17, then 14 off of the Rift Bolt. Well, now if, if Collins just keeps throwing burn at the face, there's a chance that Dilks actually just gets to go uh, Primeval Titan for a couple bounce lands next turn. Bounce Kabir Crossroads played again. Maybe copy it with Vesuva and just gain a ton of life that Collins can't really handle. Goblin Guide attack will pick up a Celestia Sanctuary for Dilks. Knocks him to 12. Worded Foothills is the land for Mullen. Skewer the Critics takes care of Asusa. All right, so not a whole lot of shenanigans there, but if Dilks has a natural six mana untapped, he can cast Primeval Titan, go and get a Vesuva to copy Kabir Crossroads and a Bounce Land to return to hand. Another Gemstone Mine will be the land. And here's a tap for six mana. You're seeing exactly why the Amulet Titan deck has a pretty reasonable burn matchup because it has the ability to not only put Kabir Crossroads on the battlefield pretty easily, but copy it, bounce it, do a whole lot of other stuff to it. And each time it comes down or triggers, effectively eliminates two thirds of a spell from the burn side of things. Finds Talaria West and Vesuva, copying Kabira Crossroads to 14. And yeah, this is the positioning you're seeing here, the advantage the Titan deck has, and a lot of matchups, a lot of pressure on the Titan deck to try to go for an actual kill, to tread water with interaction. But these Crossroads in this matchup buy him so much time. Similar story with Colony Garden if, he's a, if he produces one of those as well. Mm -hmm. Each one just counts as a blocker for the Goblin Guide attacking or the Monster Swiss Fear attacking. It's like Mullen is fetching on end stepped, finds a Sacred Foundry. Important to note, Collins actually has added four copies of Sunbake Cannon to the burn deck, which give it a little bit of flood protection. He has gone up to 20 lands, where most of them did play 19 in the past because of it. 
Mullen will draw for turn. Picked up a Searing Blaze. I think Blaze, Helix, and two lands is the hand. Well, you can go land, Searing Blaze, three to the Dumb, three to the Titan, and Helix the Titan to clear it. That'll let him attack for two with the Goblin Guide and make it so that Dilks can't attack with the Titan next turn and get two more lands, which will almost certainly be uh, like bouncing and copying Kabir Crossroads once again. Land will be Arid Mesa, fetches a 17 for a Mountain. Looks like he is setting up the play you described. Searing Blaze, Dilks to 11. Lightning Helix, finish off the Titan, Mullen to 20. Yeah, but after this attack for two, Collins is on E. He's just got a land in hand, Goblin Guide in play with Dilks at 9. He just picked up a Bounce Land, so if he has another Azusa, he can go Bounce Land, Crossroads, you know, uh, play it again, gain two more life, and effectively invalidate another Goblin Guide attack. We'll go back to Dilks. See exactly what he has as a follow-up. Well, also he has a bounce land, so he could just bounce Talaria West, transmute it, go get Summoner's Pack, Pack for Titan. I don't think he has enough mana to do that and cast it this turn, but he's very close. Right, a little bit shy at this point. Can certainly do it over the course of two turns. He does not know the last card for Mullen is just a land. Some combination of two cards, a uh, Boros Charm plus Burn Spell plus Goblin Guide is lethal next turn. Yeah, I, a lot of times you, you have to think in multiples of three for Burn, but the occasional Boros Charm just usually throws that math out the window. Unfortunately for Collins, though, he just, just have a land in hand, so uh, almost impossible for him to win the game next turn. Dilks, on the other hand, doesn't necessarily know that. Might make a, an aggressive play. Just have to wait and see what the rest of his turn yields. So there was a transmute for Summoner's Pact. And here's a Susa. So he's only played one land so far. Simigro Chamber is the second. Kabir Crossroads will be the third. And he gains two more life up to 11. Colin's in a bit of trouble now. <laughs> and our Boreal Grazer joins the party. Really good check on that Goblin Guide. Yeah, and he's probably just going to bounce the Kabir Crossroads yet again. And then he can't play it yet this turn, but he can't play it next turn. As well as a Primeval Titan. Things, the, sorry, good. Uh, the Grays are a one of in the deck. Relatively new addition. Yeah, but it is quite good against Burn. Stops Goblin Guide. You know, Chump blocks Swiss Sphere Slash blocks it for a while. And yeah. it just ramps you. Yeah, this is exactly the kind of matchup you want it in. I'll say Abril Grazer is a lot better in these Titan decks than it would be in, or that it is in the standard decks that it, it does see play in because uh, you have a lot more functional land drops with those bounce lands than you do with just your generic lands in standard. Each of those bounce lands equates to roughly two land drops, so you're always going to get a, a mana acceleration off of that Abril Grazer. Draw for Mullen was a Lightning Helix. He took down the Asusa with that. Goes to 23, but he's already seen the Summoners backed. So, likely to see a Titan this turn. So now he can uh, pack for Titan, cast it, go get um, Slayer Stronghold and a Bounce Land, return the Slayer Stronghold to hand. He hasn't played a land for turn just yet. And that allows him to activate Boros Garrison, get two more lands, probably going to get... Well, I don't know what he gets after that, but <laughs> I'm sure he knows. He's already done this math two turns ago. And many times over. Not his first time playing against Burn, I'm sure. Slayer Stronghold plus Growth Chamber. He's going to pick those up and make his Titan hasty. Probably going to go get Talaria West and another Bounce Land would be my guess. Just because... Uh, Maybe a double bounce land, though. He might just want to go bounce Vesuva, bounce Kabir Crossroads, and then continually gain life over the next couple turns. But I think he's just trying to actually kill Collins. It's like Talaria West, the first land off the attack trigger. Simic Growth Chamber to join. Picks up Talaria West. All right. Collins is going to take eight damage here from the Titan plus Slayer Stronghold activation. Simic Grow Chamber plus Gemstone can transmute the Solar West right now. Looks like that's what's going to be the case. I 
Yep. Goes ahead and transmutes. Can go get injured explosive if he wants to check the goblin guide. Walking Ballista doesn't seem like a bad one, but he might just want another Primeval Titan. He can just go get uh, another Summoner's Pact. On upkeep, he's going to have to pay for the first pack, then he can cast the second pack, go get Titan again. Cast it, give a haste attack for 14. Maybe get Sunhome along the way too. Yeah, Summoner's Pack was the fine. And Mullen doesn't even want to see it. He knows the situation. He's going to pack it in. Yeah, just drew another land. Nothing really can, can be done. Dilk's not you know, doing more Kabir Crossroads stuff there. Really signified that he had the game in the bag. And Collins wants to try again after sideboard with his 14-card sideboard. <laughs> so players reaching for their sideboard. Matthew Dilks did bring 15 to the table. The sideboard for him, three Path to Exile, three Spell Pierce, two Force of Vigor, one Engineered Explosives, a Graft Digger's Cage, a Tormod's Crypt, a Hornet Queen, a Remunap Excavator, a Reclamation Sage, and a Field of the Dead. He's going to want to go a bit lower to the ground. Um, I don't think Path to Exile is very good. You know, you can tag Eidolon the Great Revel with it or one of those one-drop creatures, but giving the burn deck extra mana in the early turns is not really where you want to be. Path to Exile is more for stuff like the Mirror, Eldrazi Tron, decks with really important singleton creatures, not decks with a wide mass of creatures. Spell Pierce, on the other hand, might be okay. Stops an early burn spell. Occasionally can protect your Amulet of Vigor from something like Smash of Smithereens or your Titan from a Path to Exile or your face from a Deflecting Palm. So I don't mind the Spell Pierces, but uh, they do go dead pretty quickly in the matchup because the burn deck does uh, stay really low to the ground. Uh, outside of that, you know, maybe the Explosives to help clean up some one drops. Maybe the Hornet Queen is a one-off target if uh, Collins goes super wide with Goblin Guides and Monster Swissers early, but it's really slow. Uh, that's about it. He doesn't have a great sideboard here, but he doesn't really need a great sideboard for this particular one. Yeah, pretty commanding win in game number one. Sideboard for Mullen. Four Smash to Smithereens. Four Tormod's Crypt. <laughs> Three on the actual red sheet. Maybe should have a fourth. Three Path to Exile. Two to Kotli Honor Guard. And two Deflecting Palm. Now, I think there's a chance that Collins can side up to 11 cards in this matchup. How many he sides is completely up to him. I think uh, you need to be careful about over sideboarding because the more cards you sideboard in, the higher chances of you kind of fading away as the game goes, drawing one too many path eggs out when your opponent's at six life, for example. Now, Smash the Smithereens is a great answer to Amulet of Vigor, but doesn't have a whole lot of targets. I don't think I would board in all four, maybe just a couple to slow down Amulet Titan. But if Collins is really scared about the speed of Titan, maybe the smashes are worthwhile in full four. Path to Exile is a fine answer to Primeval Titan, can buy you some much needed time. To Kali Honor Guard is an interesting one. It does shut down the initial trigger effect from Primeval Titan. So I might want to bring those in. That does sound pretty, pretty cool. And then Deflecting Palm when Dilks does go for a Primeval Titan attack with a, a Slayer Stronghold. A two-mana spell that just domes your opponent for eight is pretty good. Matthew Dilks playing his trusty amulet Titan deck, named in part for Primeval Titan, a mythic rare from Magic 2011, which you just might find on sale this week on StarCityGames.com for the mythic sale. 33% off select mythic rares. That's through tomorrow. The sale updates every week on Monday at go.starcitygames.com slash sale. Yeah, and even if you're not a huge fan of the Mythic Cell in general, we do have a new cell every Monday. So make sure to check that tomorrow at go.starcitygames.com slash sale to see what we got on the docket. I have no need for a foil New Phyrexia Karn Liberated, but seeing cards like that makes me want them. Yeah, I mean, 33% off, that's a steal. That's just a really nice card. That's probably below mid. Hmm. Love me a sale. <laughs> Collins here shuffling up for game two. Got a lot on his mind right now. Down a game. Back against the wall. He is does have two losses here. A third loss does not knock him out of the tournament necessarily, but it does make things a bit harder as he goes. Matthew Dilks at 9-1-1 one one in the event. Really dominant player here on the tour. Last year, seven opens with two top eights. Eight top eights all time. Part of that team with Edgar Magiation, Daryl Ayer, is a force to be reckoned with. 
Yeah, I mean, six open top eights this year, one of which was solo, five of which were team opens. Doesn't have a win this year. Can't quite close in those team events, but the fact that they've top eighted five out of six is impressive stuff. And most of the time, they are playing this Amulet Titan deck in the modern seat. Their most recent top eight, though, Dilks was in the modern seat playing Eldrazi Tron, one of the most popular decks here in day two at SCG Columbus. Guess he had enough of that strategy, though. Played it to a good result. Wasn't feeling it. Back on the Titan deck. And it was possible that his individual record with the deck was something like, you know, 10 and 5. And he's like, well, Old Faithful treats me a little bit better. I'm going to go with that next time. But the Eldratitron deck might have been a, a metagame call. Dilks on at least one mulligan as we're going into game number two. Yeah, but those bounce lands do reset the mulligans quite well. So if he has a sixer with a Simic Growth Chamber or Celestia Sanctuary, it takes a little bit of the pressure off of him, though his draw will likely be a bit less explosive than normal. It's one of the decks that do get a lot better thanks to the London Mulligan, if you ask me. Yeah, certainly. Looking for some pretty specific stuff in your opener. That just naturally makes sense. Mullen on the play, inspiring vantage. This time it's a Monastery Swift Spear. Dilks to 19. Attack for one, but represents a lot more damage as the game goes. Every burn spell equates to a plus one. And if you can string together a few uh, burn spells alongside, uh, or more than one burn spell in a turn, that equates to extra damage as well. Claria West was the land for Dilks. Just another attack for one, Dilks to 18. And here's the Kotli Honor Guard for Mullen. Yeah, it's got Leon If we can get that one up on the screen, that'd be nice. But it's more of a, a standard card that has seen a lot more play in recent memory uh, because it is very good against the likes of Wild Growth Walker and those explore creatures that we see like Jade Light Ranger. But here it does a great job at stifling the development of the Amulet Titan deck and really slowing down their Primeval Titans. Also shuts off our Boreal Grazer. Sure does, but there's only one copy of the, that in the in Dilks' deck. We see Celestia Sanctuary and an amulet for Dilks. He picked up his Talaria West with the Sanctuary to play Sakura Tribe Scout. Yeah, has a white floating, unlikely to use the mana unless he has a second amulet. Maybe he has a path to exile here, actually. And if he has the path for the Takali Honor Guard. It's going to be a, a way for him to turn on the Primeval Titan. So he just passes. The mana goes away. Back over to Collins Mullen. Looks like five burn spells in hand, among them a Boros Charm. Yeah, but it looks like all of them actually cost two. So he's not going to get a ton of value out, out, off of the uh, Prowse effect from Moss Air Swiss Beer. But it's still a lot of damage overall. And if he has enough time at the end of the day to deploy all of those burn spells, that is enough to actually kill Dilks. Looking at firing off one of these before his attack with both creatures connects. It'll be Lightning Helix on Sakura Tribe Scout. He'll go to 23. Three damage coming in at Dilks. Dilks to 15. Now, as a, a burn player, you never want to be forced to throw a burn spell at a creature. Normally when you do, that means that you're starting to fall a bit behind. If you are a, uh, a, a, his, an, a magic historian, You'll remember like various burn strategies and zoo strategies playing against Affinity. Affinity was always one of those decks that was pretty good against burn because they had a fast clock and their creatures were so good the burn deck would often have to target them with burn spells. Here Dilk's uh, playing a similar game plan. Dilk doesn't want to give Collins a land. I'm almost positive he has a path in hand and is just refusing to cast it because Collins is kind of stuck on two and isn't really going explosive here. And he doesn't have mana for a Titan just yet anyway, so giving up that mana could be a factor in the game. He just used Ancient Stories to find Colony Garden. Mullen's attacking with the Honor Guard and the Swift Spear again. The Plant Token is just going to jump in front of the Swift Spear. So one point across, Dilks to 14, and Mullen passes. Another Ancient Stirrings as we head back over to Dilks. Yeah, another copy of Amulet of Vigor would allow a bounce land to generate enough mana to cast a Primeval Titan this turn. But finds another Slicing of Sanctuary. See where he goes from here. 
hand shaping up a little bit for Mullen. Still has a few two-point burn spells, but now has a lightning bolt and a lava spike. Land for Dilks will be Vesuva copying Colony Garden, makes a plant, and Sep Mullen will Boros Charm Dilks to 10. Mullen draws for turn. It's a second Monastery Swift Spear. It's a pretty significant draw. Yeah, he can go Swift Spear, has Bolt at the ready, can deal a lot more combat damage, and then once the board gets really gummed up with a Primeval Titan, maybe has enough burn in hand to just go face for the win. Cast the Swift Spear, pre-combat, cast the Lava Spike, Dilks to seven, attack with all the creatures. Plant jumps in front of one Swift Spear. And now, looks like Dilks is going to go for that Path to Exile, uses it on the Honor Guard. Yeah, this is real smart sequencing by Dilks. He's going to take two damage from the Swift Spear and go to five, but it's going to unlock the two lands being grabbed from Reval Titan on the next turn. He has a Slesna Sanctuary in hand. You have to imagine he's going to play a Bounce Land, make six mana, cast Titan, and definitely go get Kabir Crossroads. But let's see if he can do anything else in the meanwhile. So with the Primeval Titan, he can find his Kabira Crossroad, as you mentioned, in game two. Though he already has his Vesuva on the table. So without, I suppose, yeah, he needs to make a land to make the Titan. And then without a way to play extra lands, he can only get the Kabira active once this turn. Seven life might not be enough. Yeah, I mean, Collins does have uh, a bunch of burn in hand. I know he has multiple copies of Lightning Helix and a Lightning Bolt. But if Collins doesn't have another Boros Charm, it uh, might be enough to, to save the day. So here's Summoner's Pack for Dilks. He had another Bounce Land. Here's Primeval Titan. Go and find two lands. Slayer's Stronghold, Boros Garrison. Yeah, it's always a nice one to get first because that lets you attack with a Primeval Titan with Vigilance and get two more lands. Haste up the Titan. It picks up the Slayer's Stronghold with the Boros Garrison. So Colin's going to take 8 damage here. Down to 15. Dilk's going to probably go get Kabir Crossroads, send him up to 7. And then, I don't know other than that, maybe uh, Bounce Land to bring back the Colony Garden? Looks like he gets a Talaria West. Okay. Talaria West, Kabir Crossroads. He'll go to 7. Uh, he needs another Path to Exile or something here. Otherwise, Bolt plus Lightning Helix and the attack of the two Swiss Spears is going to be enough to, to win game two here for Collins Mullen. Mullen to 15 off the attack. Dilks will pass back, so he has white mana up. Theoretically could have that Path to Exile. <laughs> they don't know whose deck is who. <laughs> <laughs> Players playing the same sleeves, looks like. That's pretty funny. Good thing they me. checked. It looks like they were actually backwards. <laughs> and for my draw step, my burn deck draws Amulet of Vicar. This one doesn't deal any damage. Draw step for Mullen, another Lightning Helix. If but you're Mullen, you got to go for it. And I like this. He's attacking. He goes for Helix before damage. I kind of wanted him to see getting one damage in for sure and then post-combat doing this. It doesn't really matter. You're going to lose if the Swiss Fear gets hit with a removal spell anyway. Well, there's an argument for killing the Titan if it's not lethal. That's fair. Uh, okay, good point. Good point. But uh, he does take it down. The match now tied. Players going to game number three. But what if he cycles Renewed Faith? <laughs> and he goes to three. That'd be a heck of a sideboard technology for the weekend. Collins Mullen playing Burn this weekend player that one of the early adopters of humans in modern that's where he did get his open win last year showed up for 14 events got three top eights with eight top eights lifetime and two invitational top eights yeah just a great player really young still at only 24 years of age uh, i know that during the last run of the players championship i would see him on the regular down in durham raleigh area north carolina for those uh, regional events and, and uh, super IQs and things of that nature. He was always grinding, and he was always doing pretty well, too. Fan of rock climbing and bouldering. Not a fan of razors. <laughs> Not a fan. Well, those are sharp. I like my wit. <laughs> I have heard 
That bouldering is a pretty meditative activity. Oh, honestly, it looks like he actually he got over his fears. Yeah. Fear of the razor. He's clean, As we age mostly clean shaven. and mature, we grow. We and face our fears. We yeah. accept more responsibility. Sorry, what were you saying about bouldering? That it is physically intense? I was saying it was a nice meditative activity. It clears your mind. Yes, you versus rock or, in most cases, a fake rubber wall with stumps coming out of it. Yes. I do not want people to take that the wrong way. I know bouldering is taxing. It is very physically taxing. Absolutely. Personally, I have some issues with heights. These activities are not my favorite. That's fair. If you go to a bouldering gym, though, you'll, you'll see uh, they have a lot of harnesses and things like that to, to keep you relatively safe. But See, they make you safer, but they make me worry more. Hmm. Why you got all those harnesses if this is so safe? Well, if you didn't have the harnesses, it's not very safe. I'm not saying it makes sense. I'm <laughs> saying I have a stupid person monkey uh, brain, and I can't get my head around it. Both players here drawing their openings for game number three. Dilk's going to be on the play. Let's see if he can cobble together a win here against this burn deck. The benefit of the burn deck in general is that it is, above all else, it is consistent. Does the same thing every match. Plays a creature, hopefully on the first few turns, and then goes burn spell, burn spell, burn spell, burn spell, you're dead. Now it's your job as the opponent to do something to stop it or to win the game before that happens. Dilks is able to do that in game one, stopping it via Kabir Crossroads. In game two, though, Colin's scraping by getting that last point of damage in before Dilks could untap and attack with the Primeval Titan and really gain too much life to get out of harm's way. See, an unfortunate mulligan for Mullen. I believe he was looking at a totally serviceable hand, but the mana base was two mountains, and he had at least one white spell he couldn't cast. Eee. Now, these decks are playing uh, two to three basic mountains in them. Usually, Collins has leaned towards three. Perhaps maybe go back down to two, especially if you're going to play, uh, what, 12 white cards in your main deck? Now, you do have those fetch lines to go get it, but I have to imagine the third mountain is not overly useful. I kind of like the direction of the third mountain. It's balancing the addition of the Sunbake Canyons, the fact that this mana base is generally Dealing more damage. painful. Sure, sure. I'm not sure what the exact mix is, but this does make some sense to me anyway. Oh, sure. No, that, that does make sense. Now, they do usually have the third Sacred Foundry, but here he does only have two. And that is, of course, because of those Sunbay Canyons giving him more white sources. Combine that with Inspiring Vantage, and you have a, a, a mana base that occasionally deals you a lot of damage and occasionally doesn't. You know, it's, it's very uh, back and forth on it. Mm -hmm. We have Mullen going to five now. And with Dilks on the play, that can be just a disaster for the burn deck. Yeah, not only on the play, but kept seven on the play, so you know his hand's pretty good. Right. And it wasn't a thinker either. It was a snap... I'm good. Collins immediately mulligans. But with the London mulligan, he does get to look at seven cards here, choose the two worst ones, put them on bottom. So if he has a hand that's like four lands, three spells, gets to put two lands back. If he has two lands, five spells, puts the two worst burn spells back. Doesn't look thrilled about the five. Now, I can't really get a great look at it because it, we're pretty high up here. It's very small. But looks like he is going to keep. Going to put those two on the bottom. We're going to be off to the races here for game number three. A spot, it's a Cotley Honor Guard in the holdings. Yeah, I think I see Honor Guard, Goblin Guide, Rift Bolt, two lands, which is a pretty decent hand. Putting back, it looks like Lightning Bolt and another spell, maybe a Searing Blaze or something, but he's going to change gears here. So Deflecting Palm, maybe that was one of the ones he was th thought about putting on the bottom, but on five cards, you know, that, that does potentially represent six to eight damage that he can prevent and deal to Dilks. Right, he has locked in his five. Dilks will be on the play, and he has the turn one amulet off of Forest. That's good news here for, for Dilks for sure. Sunbaked Canyon, Swift Spear for Mullen, both players to 19. Yo, I think, I actually think Mullen's might have done one of the most aggressive things I've seen in a while. I think he actually put a second land on the bottom. Knowing that if he drew a third land, he would very likely lose. 
keeping an extra spell in his in his wake. But uh, ancient stirrings for Dilt misses. Speaking of putting cards on the bottom, how is that possible? He had five looks. Five looks! Solario West is a second land. Not clear that Dilks has a bounce land yet. Oh, but no second land for Mullins. He's got a Goblin Guide, though, to go with that Swiss Spear. He's going to chunk in for three, but he gives Dilks a look at another land. Reveals Amulet of Vigor. Connects for three. Dilks to 16. Mullins to 18 off the canyon. Now, if you're a fan of Dilks, you're going to really hope here that that Ancient Stirrings wasn't a key component for Dilks keeping this hand because if he doesn't have another land here, he's going to be in rough shape and that is the body language of a man who's in some dire straits. Here's Vesuva. He copies the forest. Engineered explosives on one. Yeah, that's going to clean up the creatures, but it's going to also blow up his Amulet of Vigor. But he does have a backup in hand. Yeah, it takes care of the first Amulet. Does have that backup, like you said. Mullen now draws the second land. Question for Mullen if he wants to attack with the Goblin Guide or not. Kind of interesting. Very likely that Dilks is going to sacrifice the explosives this turn either way. Yeah. I think uh, attacking with just Whisper is fine, but if you never attack with the Goblin Guide, he's there's like almost no reason for Dilks to blow the explosives. And if he draws a bounce land, he gets to go second amulet, bounce land, make enough mana to cast Titan. And I think that that is something pretty scary. And I think I'd rather force the pop of the explosives by attacking with the Goblin Guide. You know, it's not like he gets an extra look, right? Like it's either a land or it's not. And if he draws it for the turn, that's effectively the same thing as giving it to him with the Goblin Guide, unless it's like a bad land, and then he peels a bounce land afterwards. Mullen lands on attacking with just the Swift Sphere, Dilks to 15. Post-combat, we see Arid Mesa for Mullen, fetches to 17. I imagine he'll be deploying that Takatli Honor Guard. Yeah, Takatli Honor Guard here, going to come down for Mullins, and Dilks has a choice. Do you pop or do you wait? Canyon puts Mullen to 16. And yep, we see the engine explosives go off. Yeah, so because of that, Dilks actually got in an extra, or sorry, Collins actually got in an extra point of damage and potentially didn't give Dilks a free look at a land. I did like that attack quite a bit on Mullen's side. Double amulet for Dilks, well, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> well, but no land. No land for sure, and it's Conley Onagard potentially shutting down. A trigger from a primeval titan should it enter the battlefield in any time soon. Honor Guard knocks Dilks to 14. Arid Mace will be land number three for Mullen, so at some point he can now safely use that Sunbake Canyon to find a card. He's been hanging on to a deflecting palm since his opener. Not looking, to, it almost feels like a mulligan to four at this point. Perhaps, but you know, it could be the card that ends up winning him the game in a few turns because it deals exactly six damage for one card, you know? And in that scenario, it becomes an unmold. Like, it mold, he basically remold back to six. Mullen will fetch up a Sacred Foundry to 13 and smash the Smithereens on one amulet. Now, that means if Dilks draws a bounce land, uh, he doesn't necessarily uh, get enough mana to cast from Evil Titan. And for a deck that plays this many lands... We see Matt Dilks in this situation a lot where he just doesn't have enough raw mana to cast a Primeval Titan, even with Amulet of Vigor. Decks that have ways to apply pressure, take away the time. You know, Dilks misses it on Ancient Stirrings here, there, and now he's just in a bad way. He's still at 11 life, only phasing down one power, though. Collins has a little bit of work left to do still. Dilks has a fourth land. Now it's Gemstone Mine, but four mana does not do a lot for him. And set Mullen will point a lightning bolt upstairs. Falls to 12 to do it. Dilks to 8. Here's an attack with the honor guard. Dilks to 7. Mullen passes. A stop in the upkeep. Another oh, smash wow. to smithereens. Dilks to 4. No amulets anymore. 
Taps his four mana, Asusa, Sakura, Tribe Scout, go. So now he can block the Honor Guard anyway, but four life is not a lot. Yeah, he basically was trying to hold out for as long as he could to not... Boros Charm off the top. None of that's going to play anymore. Collins Mullen on that Mulligan to five. A little bit of help from Dilks missing on that Ancient